What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're gonna go through and wrap up the Provincials meet. So uh, it was kind of a one-off thing, a, a sort of spur of the moment decision to do Provincials. And originally I had even sort of considered doing it raw because my raw training was going really well. And then raw training didn't go so well so I decided I was gonna do it equipped. And um, yeah, training to the meet was pretty hit or miss, honestly. I had some good sessions, some bad sessions, but mostly everything other than maybe bench just kind of felt heavy, um, which is normal. And I think that if I would have had another block, and I've said this a million times, I'm sure this is redundant for many people watching. If I would have had another block, I think I could have really put up something uh, awesome and uh, you know hit some PRs and stuff. But that being said, it was a pretty good day. So we'll start from the beginning, the morning of, um, so I wake up and it's, uh, my way ends at 6 a.m. And because of COVID restrictions, you have to be there 15 minutes early so that you can get led into the building one by one. They're checking temperatures. You're having to fill out paperwork. They're doing literally everything they could in terms of COVID regulations, which I think is fantastic. And I think, uh, I think the meet directors and all the volunteers uh, just did a great job on that front. So first thing I did, woke up and thought, okay, I need to take a picture of my doping control test thing here in Canada. We have to do a, basically an online learning module that needs to be current throughout the year. Anytime you want to compete, you need a picture of that sort of completion certificate, picture your membership, and then you're good to go. So I sign on and I look at my completion certificate and I was certain that I had done this. I look at it and it says March, 2020 and it's five in the morning, so I'm like, oh shit, this isn't valid. I need to redo this. So I go through, spend about 40 minutes redoing this entire certification, only to then go back and double check my certificate and it still says March 2020. Thing is, March 2020 is when I completed it, not when it's valid until. So I wasted 40 minutes, rip to the gym uh, where the competition's being held and it's probably 20, 25 minutes away. Definitely got a photo radar speeding ticket on my way there. Get there, haul all my stuff out. Luckily, people are still waiting outside to get let in. Meet up with Danny who, again, Danny, if you're watching, thank you very much for your help that day. And I'm waiting in line, kind of look at what I brought with me and go, oh shit, I forgot one of my gym bags. So I forgot my suitcase that had all my shoes, my belt, my wrist wraps. Uh, that's mostly it, but my knee sleeves, which are useful for warming up, but so I leave all my shit. I rip home, pick up my bag, scare the crap out of Selena because I'm rooting around in the dark, banging around, uh, grab my gym bag, drive back to the gym, don't get another photo radar ticket, which was nice. And luckily, uh, I was able to get in, um, the referee who was doing weigh-ins was like, yeah, no problem. I was waiting like one minute. So I was freaking out because I thought everything was going to be off kilter. I wasn't sure I was going to get let back in the building because the way they're doing it with COVID regulations is they open it up, you can come in and then they close the doors for the day, basically. So I was really concerned I wasn't going to get let back in. Um, it worked out fine. Get to weigh-ins and I have this kind of plan. So. I've decided earlier in the week that I'm gonna weigh in heavy and make my 120 plus debut. Um, so I ate like an asshole all week. Uh, I was waking up around 119, 120 throughout the week and I get there to weigh in and I was like, uh, hey Shane, how many clothes can I weigh in in? And he said, well, whatever you want. So I weighed in at 120 point, or 121.4 I think in my sweatpants and hoodie and everything. So the reason I wanted to weigh in 120 plus is because there's a squat record at 405 and a deadlift record at 386.5, both of which on a good day are, you know, sort of well within my grasp and my, my range. So I figure, you know, it'd be cool to be able to go in and hit uh, and then, sort of, you know, walk away with the squat and deadlift record across three weight classes. That'd be really cool. So weigh in, um, get to warming up, squat warm ups go great. Everything feels like it should. Other than things are really quick. Now, again, because of COVID regulations, we've got 14 lifters max in a session. So that's a seven and seven split, meaning that being in flight B, I had, you know, uh, what is that? Roughly maybe, you know, 30 minutes at most to, uh, to kind of warm up. So from start to finish, getting into the suit, all my attempts, everything. So it was rushed. Get behind the sort of staging area, get set, 
first squat goes great. Everything feels good. Take my uh, my planned jump from my first at uh, 370 I opened at up to 390. Now from here, I figure I can jump to 405 and a half, 408 if I feel really good. But the turnaround is so quick that I get about three minutes, two and a half minutes of sitting between attempts before I have to start wrapping. So this was the fastest I've ever, ever gone through a competition. I know nationals was fast, but I wasn't self wrapping. So that made a big difference. Um, I go up for my second squat and because by this point, I've almost spent more time in wraps than out of them since I started squatting in my suit. Um, I'm having some, I feel like my, my lower limb was, was having a hard time with balance. I was having balance issues because of how close to numb I was in my lower limb pretty much the whole flight. So I get out there, um, it's, it's feeling pretty wobbly out of the rack. I get it set, I hit the hole, and as soon as I hit the hole, I tip forward a little bit uh, and I lose it. So this is the first time I've ever lost like a big equipped squat in a meet. Um, but the spotters, thank you all if you're watching this, uh, did a wonderful job, got me back in the rack, everything was fine. Nothing hurt, no issues, hips fine, back's fine, everything's good by this point. So I just sit back down, regroup, and you know, take my two and a half minutes of heavy breathing um, before I start wrapping again, start wrapping again, go out for my third. And um, I took the descent a little bit quicker. So I think on my second, I was pretty tentative into the hole because I was feeling the balance. But I know that if I can get just a tiny little bit of pop and use a bit of a dip in the bottom, I usually get a little bit of speed. So judging by where I got stuck, made the decision to go a little bit quicker on the descent on my third and uh, kind of popped into the hole and, uh, and put it up. It was a little bit, it looks a little bit sticky towards lockout, but again, that's because that last little bit of the range of motion is kind of where you need to make sure your balance is on point as you straighten out. Um, so again, the balance was a thing, but managed to get it locked up, put it back in the rack and was good for 390 on my squats. And that ends pretty much the biggest, the most dramatic of the competition, right? Bench was fine, deadlift was fine, but the squats, those were a real thing. So. For bench, um, I actually took in my sleeves earlier in the week after I had taken my openers. So this was the first time I had put this shirt on the way it was. I also did that with my squat hips, um, but that didn't seem to make much of a difference. It's a very slight alteration. So in the warm up room, I'm, I'm noticing that it's, you know, 220 doesn't quite move as far as it otherwise would or has in the past. So I'm thinking, all right, well, I hope I can touch my opener. So I go out get the opener and it's probably one of the fastest reps I've ever had with that weight. I opened at 245 and it literally just, just flew off my chest. So it felt great. So I took the planned jump to I think 250, uh, 257 and a half, if I'm not mistaken. Now on the second, the shirt, I think kind of messed me up a little bit or I messed up because of the shirt a little bit. Um, and was a little bit floaty on the touch, it took a while to get the press command, and then by the time I popped it up, it kind of came back too far. I just lost the groove and it wasn't gonna go. Again, came back out on my third, repeated the weight, 257 and a half, which is only five kilos shy of PR, um, or, or shy of my best, rather, and um, managed to get a bit better touch. Press command still took a while. It was a, it was a bit of a longer press command. Um, but the weight flew. Like my, my third attempt at 257 moved really well. So I think I was probably good for, you know, maybe 265 to 270 on that day had I done better um, and executed better. So it felt good to kind of know that there was more there. And for deadlifts, deadlift training has been really, really kind of bad lately. Uh, I had a few near grip misses with 365 in the gym. Um, just using straps the whole of quarantine um, left me very out of practice with my hook grip. So getting back into doing heavy singles, I was kind of worried. Wasn't sure if my grip was gonna be there. My deadlift wasn't feeling particularly strong. So I didn't really know what to expect from this competition. So my goal became just to chip Eric Willis's national record. So 387 flat uh, was the goal. So warm ups went well, felt okay, not spectacular. Um, get out on the platform, open at 350. It boogies, moves really well. Um, my second attempt, 370 something maybe? 
Anyways, it moves a little bit sluggish, but it goes, my grip holds, no issues there. So that gives me the confidence to kind of go for it on my third. And I loaded the, the 387. Um, it moved probably better than my second. And again, no issues with the grip. So it was really, really nice to have that uh, kind of work out. And I think plenty more there on the deadlift. I probably could have pulled another four that day. Um, so all in all, uh, it's one of those things where I, it certainly wasn't uh, like an amazing meet, but it also definitely wasn't a bad meet. It was just kind of punching the clock, putting in the work, staying fresh with my competition uh, sort of experience and came back from a couple of misses that probably didn't look too promising as a spectator. Um, you know, my missed second squat and my missed second bench both probably looked like I maybe just missed on strength and it was too much and it was going to be a tough day. Um, so coming back and hitting those attempts was good. I think I ended up totaling uh, 1,032 even from doing the math right in my head. And uh, I mean, that's less than 5% off of my best total ever with some hit or miss training, a lot of uncertainty, super quick flights. I mean, there's a lot, I have a lot of excuses, <laughs> but more or less, I'm happy with the day. Uh, I think it went well. It felt really good to compete. And one of the things I really wanted out of this competition was for it to kind of reignite the drive to be a competitor, to uh, want to prioritize my training again, because I definitely went through a bit of a period when my raw training fell off. I'm feeling good and energized to get back into training. Um, I'm excited to continue forward. Be competing again in May at uh, Nationals and that'll be out east here in Canada. And I think we can safely bank on that by May, you know, it's still within Canada. I don't know what international travel is gonna look like next year. It's supposed to be doing worlds in November. Uh, and in Norway, they kind of just shifted the schedule forward. So I'm really glad to have the opportunity to still go to Norway, but I mean, I'm not holding my breath for international travel. I don't know how any of this stuff's gonna work out, so. Yeah, but that's the video. Uh, that's the, the meat wrap up. So hopefully everybody enjoys. And uh, if you have any questions or anything, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. And we'll see you all in the next video.